Getting money ain't no to me. No, no, no to me. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing very amazing. Thank you so much for coming back to seeing my new video that I unfortunately have to tell the story of the time that I got cheated on. I don't even know where to start with this story other than saddle up because it gets juicy. It gets juicy, sweetie. So I'm not going to be naming any names regardless if I'm friends with them now or if I'm not friends with them or if I'm cool with them or nothing. I don't, it's just, I just don't want to give anyone the clout. Okay, so this happened about six months ago. I think you guys can kind of guess the ex that it is, but I'm not going to name his name because I don't want to give him any more clout. So we're going to name him, we're going to name him Mark. Should we do Mark? Let's do Mark. So I'm going to get into the story of how my ex-boyfriend Mark cheated on me with my best friend's friend the day of my birthday lunch and four days before we flew out to Bali for my birthday, which was on the 28th of February. So I'm just going to hop straight into it. The story, I don't want to miss any details. I do want to say, go get a glass of wine, go get a can of Coke, go get a sip of tea, Go get some popcorn, whatever, because saddle up, because this is going to be a long ass story time. And I really hope you guys enjoy. Before I do get into it, please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button if you want to see more story times from me. I've been through some shit, girl. So, I can definitely bring you some story times every now and then. But, I'm not going to know if you like them unless you hit that thumbs up button. So, please do that below. Okay, so I'm just going to give like a bit of a backstory of how mine and this person's relationship was. How he was as a person. Maybe the signs that like I might have seen. Um, my intuition telling me, like all that. All that. I want to say all that. Mark would lie to me throughout the whole relationship. It was more little white lies, nothing too serious. Okay, so for example, before we were together during the relationship and after we broke up, he would lie to me. Before we were together, he went up to a girl at a club, gave her a hug, and I asked who that was. And he said, oh, it's just some girl that I fucked. I was like, okay, that's a bit weird. We, we were days off being official, by the way. So for him to go up to a girl at a club that he said he has had sex with and hug her and say like happy birthday and be all touchy filly and close was not okay with me and I'm sure it's just not okay in general I don't think I'm like a crazy person there like I don't think that's okay but the gag is I found out because I saw that girl out clubbing and I mentioned him and she said she never had sex with him so that was lie number one I think he only lied to me that one time before we were actually together and then some more lies came about. So funny enough, same situation came up and another girl he went up to, he was all touchy-feely and I asked who that was. Well, I knew who she was, but I asked what relevance did she have to his life and he said that he fucked her. The funny thing is my friend was on a wine tour with that same girl. She said, you've actually slept with my friend's boyfriend and she found out who it was and she said, I never slept with him. I hooked up with him once, like made out with him. And that was that. So he lied about sleeping with two girls for what reason? I did ask him after and he said that he wanted to like look more like the man. But really, like the lower your body count, the better. Um, anyway. So honestly, the other lies were like pretty irrelevant. There would be more like he wasn't applying. He didn't apply for a job and he told me that he applied for 10 that day. Or just little things like that. Um, it wouldn't be anything too concerning to a point where I would have to reconsider being with him. So there was lies though throughout the relationship here and there. Little white lies, not anything too serious, but I do want to preface that he is a liar. He is a very good liar at that. I just really want to set the scene to make sure you guys understand that. With that being said though, I know this is so contradicting, but I would always be so happy of how much I could trust him. I always said, I'd be like, look, there's things to work on and you know, there's some areas in your life that I don't agree with or like that annoy me, blah, blah, blah. But at least I know I can always trust you. And that was my thing. I would always say at least through all this shit, at least I can trust you. Honestly, my best friend was dating a guy at the same time. And she said, I thought blah, 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 would cheat before your boyfriend would cheat on you. So that's more or less the backstory. I don't really want to get too much more in depth of how he was, who he was as a person. It's pretty irrelevant, but I will get into when he started being shady. When he started debatably cheating, depending what you would classify cheating as before, he literally stuck it in some girl, straight up blatantly cheated. So there's this girl, we're gonna call her Jane. Don't ask me why Jane, I just don't like the name Jane, so we're gonna go with Jane. This girl Jane was best friends with my best friend, 
we're gonna say because I just don't want anyone finding out so I'm gonna call my one of my best friends Lucy she definitely knew about me and Mark she a hundred percent the thing is she would always ask Lucy is Cody and Mark still together oh does Mark still have a girlfriend are Cody and Mark still seeing each other blah 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 she would she asked about three four times my friend Lucy if me and him were still together right off the bat I want to say if you know about the boyfriend and you cheat, that is absolutely disgusting. If you didn't know, I don't hold anything against you. As far as I knew, she didn't know. And then all this information came to the surface months later. So I wasn't mad at her because I believed her when she said she didn't know me and him were still together. And that's fair enough because I'm not going to be mad at a girl that didn't know we were together and then you slept with him. You know what I mean? Like, you're petty if you do that. Like, be mad at the man that actually owes you respect. You know what I mean? This girl doesn't owe you anything. Anyway, so I came to find out that she was constantly asking Lucy if me and him were still together. Um, so obviously she had been interested in him. Like, she's wanting to know if we're still together. For, like, what other reason other than the obvious? So what Mark would do in the relationship before he properly cheated on me was he was Snapchatting her. She was sending him, like, sexy photos of her body. I don't know to the extent of what these photos looked like. But all I heard was sexy photos of her body. So he would reply to them with hard eyes or, oh my god, you look so sexy, oh my god. God, like you you look so hot anything like that I asked him I live with you bro like where were you taking the, where were you replying to these messages like I'm next to you all the time we share a fucking bedroom like we live together and he was like oh like when I'm on the toilet so he would do that a few times again I don't know to the extent because he still lied to me after I confronted him about everything which I'll get into later so yeah so he was replying to her snapchats like her sexy snapchats photos of her body there was I, it was either one or two times so the thing was a little bit of a backstory again i used to be a party animal i would go out every single weekend without a doubt get super drunk and you know just be a little thought for the night but basically when i got into a relationship for the first six months i was still clubbing and then it started to slowly drift off and the last six months of the relationship i didn't actually go clubbing at all like i didn't go clubbing for six months and that was a lot for me because i just you know would go out every single weekend but the thing was he would go clubbing which i am not a crazy girlfriend i'm not like a psycho i had trust in him if i have trust in him and he hasn't shown me a reason to not trust him I'm gonna let him do what he wants, obviously to the extent of being respectful. But if he wanted to go clubbing with his friends, all I asked for was, can you let me know what time you're gonna be home? So one, I don't worry, and two, I know what time to expect you home. If that changes, that's all good. Just let me know if it changes. That's all that I would, you know, say. So he basically took advantage of that. He would basically pretend like he didn't have a girlfriend when he wasn't right next to me. And what I mean by that is he would go out clubbing and I would message him and he didn't reply for either the whole night or for like three hours. My best friend, okay. You know what? I'm gonna say my best friend Manu because she doesn't really have any other like relevance in it and nothing can like chase her back like the girl, any of that. So my best friend Manu was out and she saw him and she was just around him and talking to him. So I, and she sends me a video of him. So I was like, call her saying, hey, um, so I say, hey, Mark, oh my God, I almost exposed his name, isn't replying to my calls or messages. Can you please like tell him to reply? So she told him to reply. Tell me why. He didn't even pick up his phone after that. I call her like five minutes later, hey, did you do it? Like I haven't heard anything. She's like, yes, I've just fucking done it and he's not even getting on his fucking phone. Like he's not calling, like he's, I don't know what he's doing. He's being a fucking idiot basically. So more or less when he wasn't around me, he basically forgot about me. Um, he honestly, like when we would go out together, he would be so loyal. So next to me, he literally looked at girl, like when a girl got too close to me, he was like, like that. Like he would be really good when we were together, but I don't know what kind of shenanigans he was getting up to when I wasn't around him. His communication with me when he was out clubbing and I was at home was non-existent. It was horrible. And that really got to me because I'm just trying to one check, it, like check if he's okay. I wasn't worried if he was out cheating. I like, honestly, like care factor zero like i had full trust in him like there was no reason for me to be worried about like him cheating on me that should have been so where i'm getting with this part of information is he was out clubbing one time and it wasn't with me and what did we name her jane so jane was also out clubbing and basically i came to find out that he 
pulled her away from his friends so his friends wouldn't see this because his friends obviously knew about me. Not that that mattered because they let him cheat on me, which I'll get into. Pieces of shit. But yeah, so he pulled her away from his friends so his friends wouldn't see him dancing with her. And it wasn't just dancing. You know the kind of dancing where you're trying to hook up with a guy. If you know, you know. You're around them, like, they've got their hands around your waist. You're literally, like, grinding, like, your fucking ass on their dick. And, like, you're really close and sexy. And then, like, when you've got enough balls, you turn around and start hooking up with them. That is the kind of dancing that my boyfriend and Jane were doing. Apparently, this happened, I think, one to three times. I'm not 100% sure. My memory is really bad. But I do know it happened the night that he cheated on me. And prior to him cheating on me as well. So first of all, that is not okay. Like that is classified as cheating to me, regardless of anything else that happens. You should not be sexually dancing with a girl like that, basically grinding on a girl. That's disgusting. And this is obviously why she continuously asked Lucy if we were together as well, because she was trying to get my man. It was pretty obvious at this point when you're dancing on someone's boyfriend like that and you're sending them sexy photos, what? The intentions are there. Hi, editing Cody here. I forgot a vital piece of information. So that was all the backstory. But I forgot him and Manu's boyfriend at the time were out together. And he said to her boyfriend, if I wasn't in a relationship, I would fuck Jane because they saw her at a club. And then I'm just going to expose the other fucking cheater as well. Manu's boyfriend at the time said that he would fuck our other best friend, Jane's best friend. Which was my Manu's best friend as well. So, men ate shit. Anyway, let's get back. So that's more or less all the actions that he would do prior to him cheating. So I'm going to get into the night that he cheated on me. Saddle up. I really, really, really hope you've got your popcorn because I'm going to need the rest of the bottle before I get into it. So it was the 22nd of February that this man cheated on me. And why I know it was the 22nd of February is because that was the day of my birthday lunch. My birthday is on the 28th. I was flying out the 26th and it so happened to be that the weekend fell on the 22nd so it was the best day to get everyone together to celebrate before I left for Bali. The 22nd of February I was in a horrible mood, I felt ugly, everything was going wrong, I didn't feel good and half the people that I invited showed up to my lunch so it was just really shitty and like I just didn't have the best time. So it already was a bad day as it was but basically all I did that day was go to Target and go to lunch and then go home. So that night I think it would have been a Saturday because he ended up going out so stupidly I should have probably gone out for the last weekend I was in Perth for my birthday before going to Bali but I decided I didn't want to because again I was a homebody when I tell you I took on the role of wife I'm talking I took on the role of baby mama as well acting like I had a kid at home that I had to take care for and I couldn't go out clubbing when really I could have gone out clubbing but I just, just I, I don't know like I just thought, I think what was going through my head was why would I want to waste hundreds of dollars out clubbing on drinks when like that money can go towards my holiday that I'm going to in four days, you know what I mean? So Mark did decide to go out clubbing that night and I said again, all good, just let me know what time you're getting home. This is the night that I definitely remember I specifically asked him an exact time and if that was to change, please just give me a text so I know. Because it was the day of my birthday lunch, like we were celebrating me. I was, you know, I was just wanting to be a little bit more of a priority and just to know when he was going to be home. So if I should stay up for him so we can just like hang out for a bit. He told me 1 a.m. I was like, okay, all good, all good, just let me know if it changes. So 1 a.m. rolls around and I message him and I say, hey, like, I haven't heard from you, you're not home, any updates? And he said, yeah, I will probably be home at 2. So around 2 to 2.30 is where it all goes south. I still didn't hear anything from him. The reason why I just really wanted him to make sure that he told me when he would be home is because I had work the next day and he was dropping me off and I'm just, I'm just like an anxious person. Like if I don't know exactly like this person is going to be here to drop me off at this time, like I'm just freaking out because like that's just how I am with time. My time management is just exceedingly like makes me anxious so I was really upset that he didn't really get back to me after that because I'm worried about going to work the next day now he never didn't come home but if he was still drinking till whatever I am like he's still gonna be drunk and not gonna be able to drive me so that really upset me because I 
thought that he would have, you know, handled the situation better knowing how I was. So basically 2am rolls around and I still haven't heard from him um, when he updated me saying he'd be home at 2 and basically from 2.30 he blacked out. So what I found out that he told me, which was a blatant lie, was that he got drugged. He tried to ease the burn of cheating on me by saying he got drugged. Sweetie, you are six foot two and a man. I, okay, I'm not saying this doesn't happen. I am not saying men don't get drugged. And I'm sorry if you have gone through that. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is the majority of people that get drugged are women with potentially date rape, something like that, with the intentions to obviously do something horrible to them. It is not very often that a man gets drugged. In Perth, Perth is honestly like very safe. I've heard of one person getting drugged in the time that I've been going clubbing. I've only heard of one person getting drugged and it was a female. So the likelihood of this boy getting drugged was very unlikely. So he tried to say that he got drugged and I believe it was to ease the burn of him cheating on me. So come to find out about 2.30 he blacked out. Can I also just say, on the drug thing, right? Just because you're drugged doesn't mean you forget about your girlfriend to go cheat on them. If anything, you pass out on the floor, right? Depending what drugs, you pass out. And that's how men take advantage of you, right? And the fact that he said he was drugged. My old housemate made a very good comment. She said, I've done every drug under the sun, every single hard drug you can think of, and I've maxed out how much I've had of it. And I still didn't forget I had a boyfriend. Whether it be date rape, whether it be caps, whether it be whatever kind of drugs it was, you don't forget you have a girlfriend. Like, I don't care. Like, okay, even if he did get drugged, you just don't forget about that, you know? And I know the girl, like, I, she would not have drugged him just to have sex with him, seriously. Like, imagine doing that. That, no. I got told by him that he saw her at the club, he went up to her and they ended up leaving the club and fucking in the car. I found out from her that he was messaging her saying where she was and that he would come see her and they met at the front of the club, they went into her car, went back to her house, had sex, he stayed at her house. So the thing was, I believe the girl because one, she has no reason to lie to me, two, he came home at 7am. Two sides to the story, whichever one is true, regardless, he had sex with this girl, right? So the next morning comes around and he walks into the room at 7am. I'm blowing up his phone. I'm already so pissed off. I'm woken up because I had the worst night's sleep because he never came home. And when I tell you, I have never seen someone look like death on legs black bags under his eyes the look on his face was just it was like his soul was just not there he was just like that's what he looked like when he was walking into the room i say i blow up i'm like where the fuck were you blah 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 he said he was at his friend's bleep name and i believed him because it was south side and it does take a long time to get home from there and he said that he crashed at his mate's house that night and that was the one friend that was the one friend that I actually liked. Like, I literally hated his friends. I hated them. And it started with, they were in my home for pre's, right? And none of them introduced themselves or said hello. I invited you to my house for pre's and you're not going to introduce yourself or say hello in my own home. To me, that is so disrespectful. Anyway, basically they're all dropkick potheads, honestly. That's the best way I can explain it. They didn't have jobs, all they did was smoke weed. So obviously I wouldn't want my boyfriend around that. It's not a good influence. So that's why I didn't like them. Also, the three friends that I hated were with him the night he cheated on me. So whether it be he left without her or he was with her at the club dancing with her or even he didn't steer her away from the mates when he was clubbing and they blatantly danced in front of him. I don't care. If Manu was leaving, I would make sure I know she's going home or I know where she's going. If she was dancing with the guy, I would literally say, fucking get what well, no nah, first of all the guy's getting hit fuck off second of all i'll be like get off him now or your boy's on the fucking phone like i'd snitch the fuck like i would 100 percent snitch i don't care like if, if i can't stop it and it's happening right in front of my face i don't care to, at this point like 
he was a good person. I'm not gonna watch someone be disrespected like that. Especially my best friend. I get a fucking line. You know that fucking TikTok? Would have been that. But that'll be me. Like the fuck? No, that's not okay. And the fact that they these guys literally just allowed that to happen is just like that's just on some moral shit. Like that's just like. Nah, nah, I love you good, go away. He said he was at the friend's house that I actually did like. And I was like, yep, okay, well, I'm pissed off at you because you didn't let me know. You could have got a charger to charge your phone to let me know. You know how I am with this stuff. You know just to message me. So he was just, you know, whatever. It wasn't too much of a situation because he was safe. He was home. I got to work and it's all good. I was just pissed off and I moved on with my life. You want to know how I found out? You want to know what happened after. You want to know that he has a girlfriend now. And he, debatably, tried to cheat on her with me. <sighs> I said it. I said it. Let me get to it. How I found out. So, 26th of February, we flew out to Bali. And about one, one and a half weeks into our trip. So, it was a two-week trip. I was feeling really off about the relationship. Okay. I'm just going to be so transparent. I wouldn't have sex with him. I would have sex with him maybe like once a fortnight. And that is really weird because I was having more sex being single than I was in a relationship where it's so much more accessible. And you can just go to the one person and you're comfortable. You don't need to worry about going on the date or finding someone new or like diseases, anything like that. So it was very, very out of my character to not have a sex drive or just to not want to have sex with him. So once a fortnight was like not cutting it. That's totally fine if you do that. But for me personally, I love sex. <laughs> so that was just not like ordinary for me. So basically I was speaking to him and we were like crying. He said he wrote this like note that was so long, like in the middle of the night, he was just crying. And what he was basically saying was that he felt like he wasn't good enough for me. He didn't have a job most of our relationship, if not all of it. He only had like very casual work during the end of it. But he felt like he was holding me back from my dreams. Like I wanted to move into this apartment so bad, but I was waiting for him to have the finances. I was ready to go, but that was unfair for me to pay for everything in this new place if we were both moving in. So to an extent, yes, he was holding me back because I had the money to go. I was ready to go. Like I wanted to chase the bag. I wanted to keep doing YouTube, but like I just couldn't. So yes, to an extent that was the case. And that was what our kind of breakup in Bali was over. So I felt like he was more of a friend to me than a boyfriend because of the fact that we wouldn't have sex. And I'm like, am I more just friendly with you? And that was more or less why I broke up with him in Bali. But I broke up with him for like 10 minutes. And I was like, no, 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 it's all good. Like, I take it back. <laughs> like, I like this. I don't want to go through a breakup right now. And I said, let's just wait till we're back in Perth. Let's just see how we feel because we were getting quite homesick and Bali was like really messing with our emotions because we were there for so long. And I was like, look, can we just see how we are when we feel back in Perth, when we're back to our normal routine, when we're back to, you know, being all normal and all that. So he was like, yeah, all good. So that was more or less that. Lucy is hanging out with Jane and Jane asks Lucy again, is Cody still with Mark? And Lucy says, yes, she is. Why? And Jane says, he is not a good boyfriend. And Lucy says, why? And Jane says, I slept with him two weeks ago. So you can understand the shock that Lucy went through. Basically, Lucy obviously told Manu. Um, and they both knew. They both knew when I was in a foreign country with this man. So the stress that they had, because obviously they just want to tell me. And I'm posting him. Like, I'm acting all normal. For them to know that and just to know that I literally have no clue. My world's literally about to crush down when I know is just fucked. But anyway, Lucy was messaging Mark every single day. When are you going to tell her? When are you going to tell her? When are you going to tell her? Are you telling her today? When are you going to tell her? His excuse was, I don't want her running off in a foreign country. Can you please just give me time and wait until I'm back in Perth? And she was like, yep. Yeah. Day they got back. When are you going to tell her? Next day. When are you going to tell her? It came to about four days later when they had enough, basically. So Lucy said to him, if you don't tell her today, me and Manu are coming to pick her up and we're telling her. Manu messaged me. Hey, what are you doing today? At this point, I only saw Manu about once every like couple months. So I was very shocked that she wanted to see me. And I was, and I told Mark, I was like, oh my God, Manu just messaged me. Like how weird. Like I'm so happy. Cause like that was nice that she reached out and wants to see me. And then he was like, that night I was actually seeing my other friend 
but she said like we should catch up soon so she was trying to like play it low but anyway I was going to my friend's house and Mark was dropping me off so I was on the way to that he was out and he said can we like go for a walk or something like I just want to go for a walk and hang out with like my baby and I was like I don't really want to go for a walk I was like I just want to like get to her house like I just want to see her you know it's been two weeks and he's like okay we get in the car and we're driving he was like can, we, can I just like chat with you for a bit I was like what's up talk to me now as we're driving and he was like no like let me just like pull in somewhere I was like what do you mean just like okay so the walk wasn't just harmless just to have a walk with me like it's, you had to tell me something and I said to him is it bad and then he said just wait he was like let's just wait until I pull over the second he said that it like switched him out I was like he cheated on me he fucking cheated on me literally the second he said that I was like he cheated on me also I forgot to mention with that kind of breakup thing in Bali that was 100% my intuition telling me like run for the fucking hills like I didn't know I couldn't pinpoint what was wrong about the relationship I just knew like something's off about this and like I just need to break up with him so all I'm saying is trust your intuition sweetie trust me trust it trust your intuition so basically when he was driving me to my friend's house Lucy was on the way to Manu's and they were gonna get into a car and come collect me and tell me he cheated on me but basically he just beat them to it so I was at Hillary's car park and he pulled over and he told me and it was honestly the worst fucking feeling of my whole entire life I dropped to the ground and I said you've just like you've ruined me you've ruined us you've ruined everything my life is fucked I lived with him I don't really have a good relationship with my family so I really was attached to his mum and his dad like they were my family I lost my home I lost my family like I lost my boyfriend I lost my best friend like it was just fucked and then I asked who the fuck was it and then he was like Lucy's friend Jane I was in shock I thought it was gonna be some random bitch I didn't think I was gonna know her and when he said that name I was like, how? How is that so? She knows about us. So I called <laughs> crying. She already knows what has happened. And she's like, I'm on my way. And she was like, where are you? I was like, Hillary's car park. She was like, I'm, I'm close. I'm coming. So she was already driving. She was like on the way to Manu's house. Yeah, so she came and got me. And basically, it was just the worst fucking night of my life. I seriously, like, I would not wish that pain on my worst enemy like I would not wish that pain on my worst enemy it was horrible like when I tell you I physically felt my heart break I felt my heart break I felt broken I seriously felt like there was nothing left of me like my whole world all my goals like all my dreams all my plans were just ruined because of one action anyway <laughs> you move on to bigger and bigger if you know what I mean. So when he told me that, Lucy was about five, ten minutes out. So I was just like trying to get answers of him. And he wasn't even really saying much. He got, said he got drugged. That was the first thing he said. He was like, I got drugged. Like, he obviously came up with this little con conclusion in his head to say, when really you just got like too fucking drunk for your own good. Don't say you got drugged. Don't blame it on that. But anyway. Yeah, so my friend picked me up. I was absolutely hysterical. And then I see him in the corner of my eye, like punching a wall, punching the car. And I was like run up to him I'm like look can you just pro like I fucking hate you but just promise you won't hurt yourself or your fucking parents car because that's not your car don't go fucking punching it up and then I leave because the thing is with me no matter how like even if you hurt me I'm still gonna like worry about like your health and your well-being like I want to make sure everyone is okay regardless of, like how much you hurt me if you mean something to me I care for you like re regardless of how fucked it is obviously like that was so fucked I'm not gonna sit there and make sure he's all good but I just said like just a quick check up, like as I'm fucking growing, like, can you just bleed? Yeah, that's some weak bitch shit and we don't, we don't know her anymore. Okay, so it was a little bit uneventful after that, but I'll get into more of the tea in a bit. I lived with him, so I was kind of like staying in a couple friends' houses, like here and there. I couldn't even go to work, like when I was back at work from annual leave. Um, and I decided I really need a stable home, so I'm going to stay with him and he offered to like sleep in the garage I was like all good he did that for a couple nights and then I felt bad and I just said we'll go head to toe like in the bed like it's all good like we can just sleep in the same bed but that's it a week later I ended up taking him back and it was stupid because he never even tried to win my trust back never even tried to win me back never even tried to improve on anything and I will absolutely I'm glad that I've gone through this now because I know exactly what not to do 
if touch wood if ever I'm to be cheated on again I know I've just learnt, I've obviously learnt from my mistakes and I would never take back a cheater I it's funny because Cardi Milan and Alyssa Kulani are a couple of my idols right and they were both going through a breakup at the same time. And I was watching Cardi's video of how to get over a breakup. And I was watching Alyssa's story of how she, you know, was breaking up with her boyfriend. And, like, I just saw Alyssa and Tana as such, like, a strong unit. And for her to have the courage to break up and, like, move on from that relationship, I was like, she didn't even get cheated on. I got cheated on. Like, I need to be strong enough to, you know, like get out of this relationship so basically yeah three weeks ish go by and i don't trust him i 100 percent don't trust him so he's in having a nap actually and i go on his phone and okay i won't get into it but one of the most fuck things besides being murdered happened to my friend and she was absolutely traumatized so i went over to her house and i was staying the night because she was so scared to be home so i was basically just like staying with her to make sure she was all good it wasn't like a cute hangout it was literally she feels scared to be home so i'm going to keep her company so that night my boyfriend decided to say to his friend oh my girl's at her friend's house i'm a free man for the night I understand he might have meant it in the way that I took it, but I took it in the way that he's a free man to do, you know, to do whatever. Free man, like, pull pass, that's what I think of. And I understand he mightn't have thought that, but that doesn't look good on me. Like, he just cheated on me. He should not be even doing the slightest thing that might even just push me over the edge. I don't trust him at this point. He can't be messy up whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? And also, there was a night where he was going to get weed. So he hadn't smoked for like six months and he asked me, hey, like, is it okay just to have like, you know, a little bit of weed tonight? I haven't for a while. I was like, yeah, like, I don't care occasionally, like every few months or six months or whatever it might be. Like, I don't care. So he was on his way to get weed and it was like one, two hours later. And you can understand what was going through my mind because he had already cheated on me. I would have thought he was at some girl's house because who takes two hours to get weed when it was north side as well? Like it was 15 minutes away, right? So you can understand what I'm going through. So he told me he pulled up to his mates, but then his mates, like they were getting in a car with them and then they had to pull up to the guy's house. And then like they were waiting on the guy and then like the guy didn't have any. So they're at a park and like waiting for someone. And so I was like, show me who you're with. And then he showed me these two random guys I've never seen before. And I was with him for a year. Like, I know his friends. And one of his friends made a comment, yeah, and show her all the girls behind as well. So I hang up. If his friends won't be disrespectful to me like that, when I don't trust him because he cheated on me, so fair enough, then I don't want anything to do with them. The fact that he's going to surround himself with people that are disrespectful to me like that, when I so 100% had a valid reason to not trust him and to ask that question. So that happened. So these two situations, right? So I go through his phone and I see that and basically I wake him up and I'm like, Justin, you're a free fucking man, are you? And then he wakes up, he's like, what, what? I was like, guess what? You are a free man now. Goodbye. I walk out and my friend picks me up and I cry and all this shit and I officially break up with him. So about one and a half weeks later, because I was already buying a lot of furniture for the apartment because I just, I just wanted to get out of there. Like I was with, in his, with him and his parents. Like I just wanted us to like get out of there. But more or less, I already have basically all of my furniture and I started looking for places. I found this place a week later. I viewed it. And then a couple days later, I was accepted. And then on the Friday, I was moving in. So it honestly took me one and a half weeks to find a place, get the lease, and then move in. After that, it was a little bit difficult because I still had him in my life um, just as a friend. Just because, again, no matter what you do to me, if I really care about you, like, I just want to make sure you're all good, you know? So I was, like, comforting him, like, over him fucking hurting me. But basically, we stayed in contact. We hung out a couple times. Nothing ever happened. Let me get into the girl that he considers almost his girlfriend now if you're the girl and you're seeing him now no shade to you literally whatsoever you can have him like i could have had him i don't want him you can have him no shade no tea don't know if you know this part of the story but if you do hi i'm here to tell it so i was getting a room at crown because i was doing some OnlyFans content right i was doing a photo shoot blah 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 and basically manu was over she had work in the morning so she couldn't stay so when she left I like hit off a couple people because like I was just bored. Like I genuinely just wanted to hang out, right? All my <laughs> all my other boyfriends were busy. So I hit him up. I was like, look, like literally just to hang out. Right? So he pulled he was like, yeah, I'm on my way. So quickly just pulls up at 11 pm at my hotel room. Does that not look suspicious? So nothing did happen. 
Trust me on that. I didn't even want to have sex with him in the relationship, let alone out of the relationship. Nothing happened, but bet your ass if I wanted something to happen, it would have happened. So he did do that, and I'm not saying that he had the intentions to do that or that he wanted to do that. What I'm saying is he has cheated before, and he's pulling up to his ex-girlfriend's hotel room when he's literally dating another girl. That's all I'm saying. So there was that, and then also we would still stay in contact, but very friendly, blah, blah, blah. About a week ago, he messages me at 1am, what are you doing? On a Saturday. No joke, I will put the fucking screenshot here. What are you doing? And I was I was still up because I'm like a freaking night owl. I was just reading, doing whatever, you know, playing with my fucking cats. And he says he just wants to kick it and watch the Ace Family and eat McDonald's. Fucking, like, my two favourite things, first of all. And also, I was like, look, like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just really tired. Like, it's 1am, I'm about to go to sleep anyway. And he was like, yeah, all good. So the next day, I actually messaged him at, like, 6pm. And I was like, hey, like, I'll take you up that offer if you want. You know, like, if you want to come over, we can watch Ace Family and eat Maccas. So I was just making an alternative for what he initially wanted to do, right? He hadn't replied to me for, like, three hours. I tried calling him and he didn't reply. I was like, whatever. And then he messages me back. Hey, sorry, I was with his new girlfriend's name. I was like, okay. I was like, yeah, at least he's honest. Like, I, I already knew that, but I, like, don't give a fuck. And he said, do you still want me to come over? It was 10 p.m. at this point, right? I was like, um, I was like, oh, like, it's all good. Like, I already ate dinner. Like, I already made and ate dinner. Like, I'm a bit full. Like, maybe just some other time. And then I basically said to him, because I knew, okay, we're going to call this girl... What are we going to call her? Sarah. I knew there was more going on with Sarah. Again, your intuition, right? I don't care. All I care about is he's fucking lying. He's fucking lying to me. I say to him, look, I don't care if there's anything going on with you and Sarah, but you're literally making it out that there's less going on than there really is. She literally has a boy and girl, like, love heart kind of, like, emoji in her bio. And I was like, she doesn't have that for no reason. It's either she thinks there's more going on or, like, you're literally lying to me and I know which one it is. Like, I don't care. I care that you're fucking lying to me. That's all I care about, right? And then I... And then he said, look, tonight we actually made it official. If you don't understand why I just had to pause, let me put the pieces of the puzzle together for you over there, right? 6 p.m. he was with Sarah and asked her to be his girlfriend. 10 p.m. he's messaging his ex-girlfriend if he can come over and chill. I live by myself. He wants to come over to my apartment, me and him, at 10 p.m. at night. Again, I'm not saying anything would happen because I don't want it to and I whatever. But it does not look good on him. Like, if I wanted something to happen, it would happen. And, like, he's wanting to pull up to his ex-girlfriend's house at 10 p.m. alone by himself when he just made it official with his girlfriend. How about, like hang out with your girlfriend like that you just made it official with anyway the funny thing with that is i also saw a story of them taking shots together and i i know the girl like i was cool with her and i was like oh you and sarah huh like when they first started talking i guess or fucking or whatever and he was like yeah <laughs> like how he acted i was like oh what's that about i was like do you regret it and he was like yeah like i kind of regret sleeping with her and then he said she looks like a fish and that he regrets having sex with her and now that's your girlfriend. You're talking shit to your ex-girlfriend about your current girlfriend. That she looks like a fish that you regret having sex with her. So, that happened and that's about it for this whole entire story, guys, honestly. Like, so moral of the story, men ain't shit. Clearly, he didn't learn from his mistakes because he's still hitting me up when he literally has a whole ass girlfriend. I just can't. I can't fathom it. Like, I'm just so shocked. So I, I did call him up that night and I was like, um, what the fuck? You just made it official with your girlfriend and why are you trying to come? I was like, I don't care that you've got a girlfriend now. What I care about is you're trying to come over to my house as you had a fucking girlfriend. That's so disrespectful. Anyway, guys, that is the long ass story time of when I got cheated on. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this story time. If you do want more story times, my life is chaotic we've been chaotic for a long time so i can definitely give you more if that's something you're interested in if you did like this video please give it a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe below so you don't miss out on any single uploads i am uploading three times a week sometimes four so you definitely don't want to miss those and yeah anyway guys until next time see you later Mwah.